It happened almost overnight. One day, Katie Hamlin was an active, outgoing Mobile, Alabama teenager. The next, she was battling for her life, and her family was beginning a seven-month journey that would end in nothing short of a miracle. We knew when we walked in that we had our hands full. This was going to be one of the most difficult trips we've ever, ever taken. Her outcome was going to be highly based on could we make it back two children with her. We spent over two hours in their intensive care unit attempting to transfer her onto our ventilator. And when we did leave, we could not guarantee that she would be alive when we got back to Birmingham. She almost didn't make it here on transport because she was so sick. Really, without critical care transport, she would not have survived. Uh, she would not have lived long in Mobile. She would not have survived to make it here. When Katie arrived at the Children's Hospital of Alabama, she was in respiratory distress. As days passed into weeks, her doctors grew more and more concerned. We all worked very hard on her for months, but there was still a very long time when we did not think Katie was actually gonna first make it out of the ICU. It was overwhelming. She just suddenly became ill and very quickly had to be put on a ventilator. And now the ventilator wasn't even able to keep her oxygenated. Katie's only hope was ECMO, a procedure that delivers oxygen to the blood via a machine and gives injured lungs time to rest and heal. Occasionally we put people on ECMO and we think, well, maybe we could have pulled them through otherwise. In this case, there was absolutely no question. Without it, she was dead. Despite round-the-clock intensive care, Katie's 25 days on ECMO were fraught with complications. While in a drug-induced coma, she had suffered a stroke. The extent of her brain damage was yet another cause for concern, and there were no promises she would ever return to a normal life. What made her case a lot more uh, difficult, really, is that she started to bleed on ECMO, not into her brain, but into her chest. And every couple of days, we had to pull, we had to open her chest and pull out a, a gallon of clots. And then we would wait another couple of days and do it again. I had told the parents that I thought her chances for survival were quite low. But then one day, she stopped bleeding. July 29th. My birthday was the next day. July 29th, she rolled her head over and looked at me. I could see her eyes for the first time. That was my birthday present. When Katie was off ECMO and finally able to leave the ICU, the long, slow process of rehabilitation began. Initially, when I would see her, she was sleeping all the time and they said she was really not very responsive and so I thought to myself she's physiologically alive but not really communicative and then I went by to see how she was doing and she was sitting up and perky and when I saw that I started to tear up and I had to leave the room uh, it was that kind of an experience Today, the cause of Katie's illness remains a mystery, but her recovery? To see where she is now is really nothing short of a miracle. It was unbelievable, really, to see her leaving, and I think it sort of brought home why we do what we do and why we keep believing in these kids every day. The staff at Children's, they are all angels. They truly are. I just never experienced the love of these kind of people. They're so sweet. They do so much for me. They take care of me. Saved my life. I mean, I just love them.